Hey up lads and lasses, Danfi here, bringing you another review. Got a great one for you today, Crying Sons has released for mobile. Originally released on PC and Mac, it has been adapted and redesigned for mobile and tablets, with intuitive con touch controls and revamped interface. When FTL meets Foundation in June, Crying Sons is a tactical roguelite that puts you in the role of a space fleet commander as you explore a mysteriously fallen empire. In a story-rich experience inspired by Dune and Foundation, each successful run will uncover the truth about the Empire and yourself as well. To have a quick breakdown of the story, without giving away any spoilers, it is quite a cool story and uh, the game does a very good job of telling that story. You are a captain of a ship, a clone of an admiral of an empire that has disappeared from existence, and as you complete chapters, uh, several times, there is six chapters in total, uh, as it is a roguelite, you will uncover more of the story about what has happened to the Empire and about the character you play a clone of. The game revolves around mostly an FTL style exploration. Each sector has multiple systems and each of these systems have multiple events known as anomalies. The combat is where I think this game really differs from FTL as it's not about multiple rooms and weapons so much as FTL and commanding each per person, as it's more about commanding multiple squadrons of fighters and drones around a map, as with tactics being the main staple around the system. This leads to a very enjoyable experience in my opinion, and a bit of fresh air on the FTL style games. With multiple types of squadrons, from support long range cruisers to drones capable of suiciding into enemy squadrons, the tactics work mostly around a rock, paper, scissors style, where drones beat frigates, frigates beat fighters, fighters beat drones. There are exceptions to this to a degree. As uh, previously mentioned, you can have cruisers that can help support fleets such as healing or previously stated long range artillery. This is also balanced by your main ship as it, ha is it can have weapons that straight up damage other squadrons and the enemy ship to blocking off parts of the map for periods of time, further deepening the tactics you can employ. The main objective in battles is to blow up the main enemy ship using these tactics by getting your fleet over to the enemy and dealing damage to the main ship. There is a lot of events, more than 300 possible story events, which keeps the game very fresh every run. So far I haven't had the same event pop up more than twice during the exploration which is really cool and an event that has a uh, i've even involved uh, a sandworm sort of like shy halud from june there's some interesting ways you go about events from simply chatting to an npc to having to send um, away teams down to planets led by one of your captains to find resources which entails them going across um, events which the uh, captain's skill can affect on, on the way and having to make decisions along the way to keep, try keep them alive. These all come over exploring sectors, which there's six in total, with multiple paths to go through and risks to take. The progression in this game is pretty interesting, taking roguelite aspects in that you can find certain named characters that uh, can follow you and always take them uh, on your next runs. So unlocking new ships and variants of ships, each with their own flavour. For example, the second ship you unlock has drones that explode on death, which you can use on the next run by completing events and achievements. However, items purchased from the stores and vendors dotted around the sectors do not come through with you on the next gameplay. There are multiple upgrades that can be purchased for ships, from allowing more weapons on the main ship to having more squads out. Then also modules that can be fitted to ships that can affect how certain aspects of the ship work. The graphics I think are really quite cool. Uh, it's got like an 8-bit style, although I will say they might not be for everyone. And there is uh, some nice sound design too to this game. Uh, the story uh, is pretty damn good. A very original storyline in a sci-fi genre. The very grim, dark storyline fits aesthetically very well with the graphics and events that happen throughout the game, and I started enjoying to enjoy playing the game 
as much for its deep gameplay as it did just going through the dark story. As this game was initially released as a PC game, you can expect a lot of depth to the story and gameplay. The added benefit also is that it's a one-time purchase, there are no pay-to-win mechanics, and there is no monetization or ads, and all future updates will be free. No season pass or anything like that. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, don't forget to check me out on Twitch. Uh, links will be just, uh, below. Uh, I'm live on Wednesdays, Thursday, uh, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 p.m. GMT plus one. Uh, hope to catch you guys over there. Other than that, have a good one, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.